Hello everyone, this is GDV4 Real Sound Review. I'm glad to be back. I hope you enjoy this Fighting the Darkness video, music video, court-métrage, whatever you call it. I really enjoyed to do this and to record it, to edit in an experimental way. And I wanted to give you a couple of inputs uh, or insights regarding what inspired uh, this short film, why I did it, how I did it, and to give you more information in order to help you achieve your own creations. I wish you are all right in this Christmas time, despite of Covid and so on and so forth. I wanted to make a video about the arrival of darkness and the darkness solstice of winter because uh, for someone born in the south of France as I am um, adapting to the darkness in the northern country or in the Baltic is something very special, it's very special on many levels. For example, you have the same thing in the summer, the days are getting brighter and brighter, the light extends to sometimes 11, almost midnight, and there is a special tradition that is called Yani Ligua, uh, that is some kind of Christmas of the summer. I know that maybe my Latvian friends would disagree with that, but you have the same feeling of something that is shut down and at rest because people are making family parties or go to the countryside to celebrate linked to this dynamic of light. In the winter it can be difficult and I wanted to improvise and to embody this disappearance of the sun as something very special. Um, also, the second thing is about challenging technically my ways of recording uh, videos and using only practical light was something very interesting. For that, you need special technique and we will come to this in a minute, but the reference about this is obviously Barry Lyndon from Stanley Kubrick. Indeed, I don't pretend to reach this level of achievement, but trying to film in a different way and to use the relationship between light and darkness as something creative is utmostly interesting. So uh, let's get into technique now. For uh, the main lens I used is not the lens I used uh, usually. So right now I am using a Flectogon Colzeis Jenna, but uh, with the black magic. This is this lens, very special, the Handivision Ibelux, uh, not the cheapest one. It opens at 0 0.85, which is uh, very nice. I suggest you have a look on the YouTube channel Media Division. It's uh, a German team, English speakers, who does a very great YouTube channel, great resources not only reviews or tips, but full documentary about a specific topic on cinema. And really, I suggest you have a look. This is thanks to them that I knew this lens and it was very useful. One thing that I especially enjoy about the end of vision are the flares. It could be perceived as a major defect for a lot of you or a lot of filmmaker, but in that case I feel like it gives an overall mood and atmosphere that participate to get this dreamy uh, image, uh, indeed because also when you open to the max there is this how the focus big zone that is one of the problems technically about uh, having such a fast lens, but the flares are especially interesting also in one case, which is the blue light of the Ebo that enlight the strings. And you will notice this blue light at a moment of uh, fighting the darkness, which is in fact uh, the uh, lead of the Ebo taken very close. And I wanted to play of these ranges of colors to give 
this material uh, another dimension, another impression, creating what I call, or what we call in anthropology or psychoanalysis, signifiers. You take this mark and in a different context it can mean something else, or it can be meaningful for the viewer or the listener. Uh, to get um, an input about why you need this kind of lens, um, when you are using a digital camera, even if you are in full frame with the last generation of Sony uh, camera, there is a point where the um, rays of the ISO will put too much background noise in um, your video and you won't be able to treat this in post-production. So you need to rely on a lens that is very fast. Um, micro Four Third is even worse than full frame because the sensors are smaller, hence more noise in the background. So it was the key spot was about having a fast lens. Um, the Endivision was not the only lens I used in this video. I used the SMC Takumar that opens at 1.4 with a focal reducer that puts the lens around 1, uh, which is great for a secondary lens. This Takumar is really nice, very warm uh, overall color grading, which is absolutely what I needed for this video especially. Um, if you are interested in the post-production of background noise of videos, you will learn on Waka's Quasi channel that essentially uh, when you care about this you have to treat the red channel for a reason it will explain better than me and DaVinci Resolve offers great post-production software solution. Uh, Waka Squazi is one of the best in color grading on YouTube. I strongly recommend you pay attention to what he says. This guy is really amazing. Um, for me, there was almost very, very few post-production. It was just color adjustment, but there was no post-production treatment. About this red channel thing, remember the Jazzmaster video I made a couple of months ago and you will see that it was tough dealing with this red guitar into pitch dark. Sometimes the native noise reduction algorithm of Final Cut is not as good as you would like it to be and if the correction is more visible than the background noise, then you reach the limit where you have to question if really this treatment is necessary and relevant. Um, about the sound, this is uh, the music is improvised, and I use uh, simply a delay and um, the uh, Line 6 green looper as I do. A lot of times you have seen this into my once you feedback you never go back videos and um, as well I will put a link in the description. Um, for recording the music I was um, not surprised but I had the confirmation that the microphones of the Blackmagic Cinema Pocket 4K are absolutely amazing. I was something between lazy, I didn't want to connect a special microphone for the sound recording. There is a beautiful stereo image, just a, a small touch of PSP Vintage Warmer to get something with more body in the sound and an EQ before and that's it. I didn't need more, this is simple efficient and I wanted to change the way I record the sound of my good old twin reverb amp for this one. Um, I hope you guys that these information are useful. Uh, don't hesitate to put a comment down below if you have more questions. As always, uh, think about uh, a like, maybe subscription if you love the content of this channel. A huge thanks for watching and I will see you here very soon.